here is my start file basic queries you can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video in this tutorial i want to talk about queries we'll start exploring queries and then we'll be creating different types of queries so what is a query a query is a database object that enables us to extract information from the underlying source tables in order to create a query based on multiple tables, you should have created relationships first. Let's explore a table and then let's explore a query based upon this table. So what if I open table employee? Well, in this table, I have different pieces of information related to each one of the employees. Among the information, I have the earnings. What if I would like to extract the records for employees with earnings above 40K? Well, someone might say, well, it's easy to do that with a filter. Yes, but a filter is volatile. While a query is a database object that will be stored in the navigation pane, and you can run it as many times as you want. And you can also use it as a base for creating a report. So I created a query based upon that, and I named it employee 40 k So if I open this query, now you can see that I have fewer trackers because this query is looking at the earnings and is returning only those records where the condition is met. In order to create a query, then you have to decide, number one, which table or tables will be used as a source for this query. You can even use other queries as a source for query. You have to select the field that will be used in your query. And then you have to specify whether you want to apply a sorting to one of the fields. You have to set your conditions or criteria. And if you want, you can create a calculated field. So I'll be talking about these five points. Selecting tables, selecting fields, applying a sort, setting criteria, and creating a calculated field. I'm going to close this query and table. So I click on the close button to the right side. And now I want to create a query. There are different ways of creating queries. Whatever you want to create, you have to go to the Create tab. And let's assume out of the table retailer, I want to create a query and I want to call it a mailing list. We have a flyer, we have a pamphlet, a catalog that we want to send out to our clients. So what information do you want to see in this query that I'll be calling a mailing list? I go to the Create tab. And on the Create tab, I go to the Queries group. And we have two methods for creating queries. The simple method is called the Query Wizard. And I give it a click. When I click on that, there are different types of queries beyond the level of this course. So I'm going to keep the default selected simple Query Wizard. And I hit OK. Then here is the first window of the wizard. Question number one, which table or tables do you want to use as a source for this query? So if you click on the down pointing arrow, you will see the different tables and queries. And that was point number one that I mentioned in the introduction. I want to select table retailer as a base for this query. Immediately when I select the source object, which is a table or query, I see the different fields coming from that object. And think now, we are creating a query called mailing list, and we'll be using it to print a label report to send out like our brochure or catalog to our clients. So what information do you want? Do we really need the retailer ID? Definitely not. I may select the retailer name, so I move it to the right. I definitely need the address field, so I move it to the right. I want to select the city, the region, the postal code. Should you wish to select the first name and the last name of your contact person, that will be fine. I don't need the phone for a mailing label, and let's say, this is all the information I want. So I move to the next window by clicking on Next. And I'm done. I created my query. I want to name it Mailing List. And when I hit Finish, here is the query. It looks like a table, and that makes sense because the query is based upon a table, and it's extracting records based upon what you specified in the wizard. Let's go and create another query, but this time we'll not be using the wizard. We'll be using the query design. So I'm going to close this one. And just to reinforce the logic, I want to create the same exact query, but I'll be creating it in Design View. To create a query in Design View, on the Create tab, I click on Query Design. And when I click on Query Design, the Show Table dialog box pops up. We saw this table in the Relationships window as well. 
So I want to select the source table, which is table retailer. I can either click and hit add, or I can simply double click on table retailer and it opens. Now I'll be closing the show table dialog box. You can always drag to expand and see all the fields. And what we need to do in order to create our query is to move the fields we want from the upper part to the grid here below. And we can do that by dragging, like I want the retailer name. I'm going to drag it and drop it in the first empty cell in the field row. I drag the field and I drop it. That's the first method for adding field. Method number two is simply by double clicking. I can double click on a field and it pops up automatically. Like this, I'm repeating one more time for the city. I double click on it and I bring it. Method number three, let's say I want to add the region, is to go to the first empty cell. And from here, I see a down pointing arrow. If I click on that, I can select the region. And when I select the region, I would have added it to the query grid. I also need the postal code, so I'm going to add it using any one of the three techniques. So I double click and here is the postal code. After adding the fields to the grid, should you wish to apply a sort? Let's say I want to sort the retailers in an ascending order by retailer name. So in the sort row under retailer name, I click and I see a down pointing arrow. I have options for sorting, ascending or descending. So I'll be selecting, let's say, ascending. That will make it easier for me to find a specific retailer, assuming that I have a huge number of records. Should you have any conditions, you add them to the criteria row. But for now, I just want to run this query and see what it returns. To run a query, you click on this red exclamation mark to the left side of the design tab. This is called the run button. When I click on it, I see the result of my query. I can name my query by right clicking on the tab and then I select save. I'm not going to do that for now because I want to switch back to design view and look at the different regions. It looks like we have many clients in California. What if I want to focus on these clients and I want to extract a mailing list for the clients in California? And in this case, you have to switch back to design view. To switch to design view, as we learned before, is either on the upper left or the lower right. So I click on the upper left on the view button and I'm back to design view. And because I do have a condition in the region, then I have to write it under region in the criteria row. I click in the criteria row under region and I want the clients in California, so I type CA. When I click outside, a little change will happen because access will help me and add CA in double quotation. I added my condition and I want to see the effect of adding this condition. So I click on the run button. I see that I have four clients in California. Let's name this query, right click, and then save. And when I select save, I'm going to name it clients CA. And that's a kind of descriptive name. I hit OK and the name appears here at the top and it appears under the queries in the navigation pane. My question is, why in the world do I have to keep reading C-A-C-A-C-A -A 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 for each record? What if I have a million records? Well, that will be totally nonsense. I already named the query client C-A, but I cannot delete this field from the query because it's the one that I'm using for providing by condition. But we have another option. Let's go and have a look. I'm going to switch to design view one more time by clicking on the view button. And here we have this little checkbox, the show box, if you take the check away from the show box, now if I run the query one more time, although the field exists in the query design, but I won't see it in datasheet view, I click on the red exclamation mark, the run button, and now I get what I want. I'm going to save the structure of this query. Let's see some other conditions as well. I'm going to close this query, and I want to create another one based on table product. Let's have a look at table product. Here is my table and I have different products. This is the very short list. I have only 24 products. And let's say I want to extract some of the products. Let's say price list based upon a condition. So I'll start by extracting a price list that shows all the products and then I'll keep adding some conditions. When you create a query, you should be closing the source table and I'm closing the source table. I want to create this query in design view and I do that by clicking on the create tab and click on query design. As we did before, we have to select the table, which is table product. And then I close the show table dialog box. 
Here are the different products. By the way, we can add all the fields from a table in one single go, just by double clicking on this little star at the top of the list of field names. When I double click on that, it's adding all the fields, but all the fields are consolidated in one single column. Just to show you what this single field is doing, if I run my query by clicking on the run button, now I see all the fields. It looks exactly like the table, but look here at the tab, it says a query. Well, that's not what I want to do, so I'm going to switch back. So I click on Design View, and I want to delete this single field, which is in fact all the fields. So I hover over the column, and when my mouse pointer changes to a black down pointing arrow, I click, and then I hit the Delete key on my keyboard. I want to create a price list query. So I just need the product name. I double click on that to add it, and I want the unit price. That's all what I want for now. I have the product name and I have the unit price. I'm going to add conditions incrementally. So what if I run my query right now? If I click on the red exclamation mark, then I'm running my query and I see all the products. If I want to apply a sort, I can do that by sorting the product name. But what I would like to do is to return product with a price greater than, let's say, $3. How do I do this? I go back to Design View. And because my condition is in the price, I go to the criteria row. And under the price, I type greater than or equal 3. I'm not typing the dollar sign. This is formatting. But now if I run the query one more time by clicking on the red exclamation mark, now I see that it's returning only those products with a price greater than or equal 3. So if I go back to Design View and I want to release this condition, so I hit the Delete key for the condition, and what if I want to extract products starting with a specific character? To extract products starting with a specific character, because the condition is in the product name, and I have to type it in the criteria row under product name. If I type letter C, Access will think that I'm looking for a product named C. We don't have a product named C. If I run my query, you will see it's an empty query. Let's go back to design view. How do I tell Access that what I'm looking for is a product starting with letter C? Then in this case, I need to use what we call the wild characters. What are the wild characters? You might have heard about this term in Excel. They're extremely useful. There are two important wild characters that we use all the time, the question mark and the asterisk. Wild characters are replacement characters, which means the question mark or the star are replacement for other characters. The question mark is a replacement for one single character, while the star, the asterisk, is a replacement for any number of characters from zero to infinity. So what if I type C in my condition and then a star? What does that mean? It means I'm looking for a product starting with letter C, but I don't know what comes next. I don't know the number of characters or even the character that will follow. And this is how we write, I want a product starting with a specific character. Look what happens when I click outside. Access will be adding a syntax, which is like, and will include the C and asterisk in double quotation. Let's run the query. So when I click on run, now I can see that it's returning the product starting with letter C. Should you wish to change the starting character, then you have to change this letter with a different letter. In this tutorial, I talked about creating queries. We created some queries based on one single table. But if you want to create a query based on multiple tables, the concept is exactly the same. With a single difference, you should have created relationships. In a previous tutorial, I talked about creating relationships. In my next tutorial, I'll be talking about creating calculations in queries, how to create a calculated field in queries.